Bring up her gain. And the last time it dried up, of course, it left with it hundreds, if not probably thousands, of tilapia and, of course, catfish. And their bones littered this place. And um, I don't know if you were with us on Christmas Day two years ago, but Andrew Francis was still working for us. And he and I came along here, and it had all kind of got all dry, but it was quite muddy still, and there was an impala ewe and her lamb stuck in the water, uh, or in the mud. So we th debated a long time and decided as it was Christmas Day, and given that this is a human sort of, I mean, one hesitates to say catastrophe, but it is a human, it is a, <laughs> it is a human intervention in the wilderness, we decided to rescue these things, and so we walked in, thinking that would maybe sink up to our knees and be able to just kind of pull them out. It turned into an absolutely, a massively painful exercise because all strewn through the mud were these pin and razor sharp bones of all the fish that had died. And we came out of there with cuts and spikes all over our feet, our legs and our hands as we had managed eventually to get these hapless antelope out of the mud and they all ran off and we went home feeling quite good about ourselves. Anyway, that is my story of Biffleshook Dam and I think we've probably milked Biffleshook Dam for all it's going to give us during the course of this current afternoon.